Question 1. What is the primary reason that employees must report any and all accidents that occur on the job site? A. Insurance reasons dictate that all incidents be reported. B. Accountability needs to be firmly established. C. Only major accidents need to be reported. D. Employers and employees can learn from the incident. Correct answer is, D. Employers and employees can learn from the incident. Question 2. Equipment that has been issued a prohibition notice must be, A. Operated by approved personnel. B. Operated by senior staff only. C. Cease to be operated until checked for safety. D. Discarded immediately. Correct answer is, C. Cease to be operated until checked for safety. Question 3. It's important for you to wear the correct type of gloves when dealing with hazardous substances. If you don't then you're like to succumb to, A. Arthritis. B. Vibration white finger. C. Raynaud syndrome. D. Skin disease. Correct answer is, D. Skin disease. Question 4. If your job role requires specific type of PPE would you need to pay for this? A. Yes, you'll need to pay a percentage of the total cost. B. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. C. Yes, everyone is responsible for providing their own PPE. D. Maybe, you might need to pay as PPE is provided at your employer's discretion. Correct answer is, B. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. Question 5. What should you do if you're given a task that requires you to wear a full body harness but you've never used one before? A. Carry on and try to work it out yourself. B. Ask a colleague who wears one for advice. C. Ask for an expert to train you. D. Ask for the instruction manual and figure it out yourself. Correct answer is, C. Ask for an expert to train you. Question 6. Which of these best describes a toolbox talk? A. It's a detailed guide on how to store your tools safely. B. It's a short discussion on a specific health and safety topic. C. It's a guide that outlines the tools approved for use on site. D. It's a guide that explains the benefits of choosing the right tools for a job. Correct answer is, B. It's a short discussion on a specific health and safety topic. Question 7. What purpose does a steel toe serve in a work boot? A. Increased traction when working from heights. B. Increased comfort. C. The steel will keep the foot more aerated than a normal boot. D. Protection against falling debris from above. Correct answer is, D. Protection against falling debris from above. Question 8. Equipment being used has recently been served a prohibition notice? If you are using this equipment, what should you do? A. If the device seems to be working properly, continue to use it. B. Nothing, the notice is only for a specific employee. C. Cease using the device until it has passed a safety inspection. D. Report the notice to your supervisor at the end of your shift. Correct answer is, C. Cease using the device until it has passed a safety inspection. Question 1. Which of the following would DH-40 relate to? A. The safest way to put out a fire. B. Safest way to store tools. C. Workplace exposure limits. D. The correct way to report an accident. Question 1 Answer C. Workplace exposure limits. Question 2. Which of the following are the best fire extinguishers to use on electrical fires? Select two answers. A. Water. B. Foam. C. Wet chemical. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 2 Answer. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 3. 
you have seen a close call accident and the co-worker that was involved is worried about getting told off, you should a. Talk to him and make sure they are more careful. b. No matter what you will have to report it. c. They seemed okay so forget about it. d. Take them to your supervisor. Question 3 Answer b. No matter what you will have to report it. Question 4. With heavy loads you should a. Drag it across the floor. b. Move in lighter safer loads. c. Carry it on your shoulders. d. Be left until someone can help. Question 4 Answer b. Move in lighter safer loads. Question 5. Why is the risk assessment so important? A. It will tell you the person in charge of the health and safety on the site. B. It will be used to delegate jobs to the workers. C. It will tell you where the tools are stored. D. It will tell you the safe way of doing a task. Question 5 Answer. D. It will tell you the safe way of doing a task. Question 6. Which of these would be involved in a Class B fire? Please select two answers. A. Cooking oil. B. Propane. C. Kerosene. D. Gasoline. Question 6 Answer. C. Kerosene. D. Gasoline. Question 7. What is leptospirosis caused by? A. Ants. B. Rats and or livestock urinating in water or soil. C. Mosquitoes. D. Dead fish in water. Question 7 Answer. B. Rats and or livestock urinating in water or soil. Question 8. What color are exit signs? A. Green. B. Blue. C. Red. D. Yellow. Question 8 Answer. A. Green. Question 9. Asbestos will only affect women and men and not children, true or false? A. True. B. False. Question 9 Answer. B. False. Question 10. Which of the following does RIDA stand for? A. Reporting of injuries. Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations B. Reporting of Injuries, Deaths and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations C. Reporting of Injuries, Destruction and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations D. Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Deadly Occurrences Regulations Question 10 Answer A. Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations Question 11. After you have raised the fire alarm, what should you do next? A. You should hide under a desk. B. Look for your supervisor so you can inform them of the situation. C. Look for your co-worker and get them out the building. D. Leave the immediately. Question 11. Answer. D. Leave the immediately. Question 1. A permit to work allows A. Untrained people to work without supervision B. Health and safety executive inspectors to visit the site C. The emergency services to come onto the site after an accident D. Certain jobs to be carried out under controlled conditions Question 1 Answer D. Certain jobs to be carried out under controlled conditions Question 2. You are about to start a job. How will you know if it needs a permit to work? A. You do not need to know. Permits to work only affect managers. B. The health and safety executive will tell you. C. You will be given a permit to work at the site induction. D. You will not be allowed to start work until the permit to work has been issued. Question 2. Answer. D. You will not be allowed to start work until the permit to work has been issued. Question 3. Which type of accident kills most construction workers? A. Contact with electricity. B. 
being run over by side transport. C. Falling from a height. D. Being hit by a falling object. Question 3 Answer. C. Falling from a height. Question 4. You can help prevent accidents by A. Becoming a first aider. B. Reporting unsafe working conditions. C. Knowing how to get help quickly. D. Know where the first aid is kept. Question 4 Answer. B. Reporting unsafe working conditions. Question 5. Which of these could be confused with the early signs of Viles disease? A. Diabetes. B. Influenza. C. Dermatitis. D. Hay fever. Question 5 Answer. B. Influenza. Question 6. You find pigeon droppings and a nest in the area where you are about to start work, what should you do? A. Let them fly away before carrying on with your work. B. Seek advice from someone and stop working. C. Try to catch the pigeons. D. Carry on with your work carefully. Question 6 Answer B. Seek advice from someone and stop working. Question 7. There are many kinds of dust at work. Breathing them for a long time can cause A. Glue ear. B. Skin cancer. C. Occupational asthma. D. Occupational dermatitis. Question 7 Answer C. Occupational asthma. Question 8. You need to move a load that is heavier on one side than the other. How should you pick this up? A. With the heavy side on your strong arm. B. With the heavy side towards you. C. With the heavy side away from you. D. With the heavy side on your weak arm. Question 8 Answer. B. With the heavy side towards you. Question 9. You need to move a load that might be too heavy for you. What should you do? A. Get someone to help you. B. Use an aid, such as a trolley or wheelbarrow. C. Divide a load into smaller loads if possible. D. All of the above. Question 9 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 10. You have been shown how you should be lifting a heavy load. After some thought you think you have a better way. How should you proceed? A. Forget your idea and do it the way you have been told. B. Ask your workmates to decide which way you should do it. C. Ignore what you have been told and do it your way. D. Discuss your idea with your supervisor. Question 10 Answer. D. Discuss your idea with your supervisor. Question 11. When you climb a ladder, you must A. Have two points of contact with the ladder at all times. B. Have two people on the ladder at all times. C. Have three points of contact with the ladder at all times. D. Use a safety harness. Question 11. Answer. C. Have three points of contact with the ladder at all times. Question 12. Tools and materials can easily fall from a scaffold platform. What is the best way to protect the people below? A. Tell them you will be working above. B. Make sure they are wearing safety helmets. C. Tell the people below to stop work and clear the area. D. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Question 12 Answer. D. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Question 13. You have been given disposable ear plugs to use, but they keep falling out. What should you do? A. Stop work until you get more suitable one and are shown how to fit them. B. Put rolled up tissue in each ear. C. Throw them away and work without them. D. Put two ear plugs in each ear so they stay in place. Question 13 Answer A. Stop work until you get more suitable one and are shown how to fit them. Question 14. 
You need to wear a full body harness, you have never used one before, what should you do? A. Try to work it out for yourself. B. Read the instruction book. C. Ask someone already wearing a harness to show you what to do. D. Ask for expert advice and training. Question 14 Answer D. Ask for expert advice and training. Question 15 If you want to be a first aider, you should A. Buy a book on first aid and start treating people. B. Watch a first aider treating people then try it yourself. C. Ask if you can do a first aider's course. D. Speak to your doctor about it. Question 15 Answer C. Ask if you can do a first aider's course. Question 16. If someone falls and is not unconscious, what should you do? A. Give them mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitations. B. Slap their face to wake them up. C. Turn them over so they are lying on their back. D. Send for medical help. Question 16 Answer D. Send for medical help. Question 1. How many employees does a company need before risk assessments are recorded? A. Between 5 10. B. Between 10 20. C. 5 or more. D. Just one is needed. Question 1 Answer C. 5 or more. Question 2. Which of these best describes a hazard? A. Something that is potentially harmful. B. Tools lying around on the floor. C. Cables lying around on the floor. D. Unlabeled chemicals. Question 2 Answer A. Something that is potentially harmful. Question 3. What is the cause of most accidents? A. Poisoning. B. Slips, trips and falls. C. Electrocution. D. Suffocation. Question 3 Answer B. Slips, trips and falls. Question 4. In which year was the Health and Safety at Work Act enacted? A. 1947. B. 1974. C. 1957. D. 1975. Question 4 Answer B. 1974. Question 5. Where would you go if your fire alarm was activated? A. Your manager's office. B. The fire assembly point. C. Go to your car and wait. D. Exit the building and go home. Question 5 Answer B. The fire assembly point. Question 6. What chemical fire extinguishers are identified by which color? A. Red. B. Black. C. Cream. D. Yellow. Question 6 Answer D. Yellow. Question 7. The safest way to lift a load is to A. Keep you back rounded at all times. B. Keep your back straight at all times. C. Keep your feet as close as possible. D. Keep your feet slightly apart with your back rounded. Question 7 Answer B. Keep your back straight at all times. Question 8. Electrical fires are best tackled with a A. Water fire extinguisher. B. CO2 fire extinguisher. C. Wet chemical fire extinguisher. D. Foam fire extinguisher. Question 8 Answer B. CO2 fire extinguisher. Question 9. Who should report unsafe working practices at work? A. Your supervisor only. B. Your health and safety rep only. C. Anyone who notices it. D. Your line manager only. Question 9 Answer C. Anyone who notices it. Question 1. 
all unsafe working practices should be reported immediately, whose responsibility is it to report unsafe working practices? A. Your supervisor only. B. Only the site manager can do this. C. Only a health and safety rep can do this. D. It's everyone's responsibility to report unsafe working practices. Question 1 Answer D. It's everyone's responsibility to report unsafe working practices. Question 2 What should you do if you're unsure about a particular topic discussed during a site induction? A. Ask a colleague to clarify. B. Meet with the presenter at the end of the day to discuss it. C. Ask the presenter to explain further. D. Ask your health and safety rep to explain at your next break. Question 2 Answer C. Ask the presenter to explain further. Question 3. Prohibition notices are given to equipment that A. Only supervisors can use. B. Only managers can use. C. Only skilled workers can use. D. Should not be used until it's made safe. Question 3 Answer D. Should not be used until it's made safe. Question 4. While carrying out a task you realize that another contractor's work is putting your safety at risk, what should you do? A. Approach the contractor and have a chat about the situation. B. Speak to your supervisor concerning the matter. C. Speak to the contractor's supervisors concerning the matter. D. Carry on working but keep a close eye on what's going on around you. Question 4 Answer B. Speak to your supervisor concerning the matter. Question 5. As an employee it's your responsibility to do all the following except, choose two answers. A. Raise concerns about safety issues. B. Write your own risk assessments. C. Report unsafe working practices. D. Provide your own PPE. Question 5 Answer. B. Write your own risk assessments. D. Provide your own PPE. Question 6. In the event of an accident a first aider can do all the following except. A. Perform CPR. B. Bandage your cuts or wounds. C. Move you while you're unconscious. D. Prescribe and give you medicines to help you recover. Question 6 Answer. D. Prescribe and give you medicines to help you recover. Question 7. Which of these does not belong in the fire triangle? A. Fuel. B. Oxygen. C. Source of ignition. D. CO2. Question 7 Answer. D. CO2. Question 8. When using fire extinguishers the term pass stands for underscore. A. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. B. Point. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. C. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Smother. D. Point. Aim. Squeeze. Smother. Question 8 Answer. A. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. Question 9. What should you do if you have no hearing protection and someone is using very noisy equipment near you? A. Work quickly then move away from that area. B. Leave the area immediately and get the right hearing protection for your situation. C. Ask the person to wait until you leave to use it. D. Carry on working and just try to ignore the noise. Question 9 Answer B. Leave the area immediately and get the right hearing protection for your situation. Question 10. Who can use a class 3 ladder to carry out work on a building site? A. Only a supervisor can use a class 3 ladder on site. B. Anyone can use a class 3 ladder on site. C. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site. D. Only a trained worker can use a class 3 ladder on site. Question 10 Answer C. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site.
Question 1. Why is it important for you to keep your working environment clean and tidy? A. To prevent rats and other animals that could spread diseases. B. To reduce the risk of slips, trips and falls. C. To reduce environmental side effects. D. All of the above. Question 1 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 2. If RPE is needed for a task but you can't find it what would you do? A. Carry on with the task and ask your supervisor when he comes along. B. Carry on with the task and take breaks at regular intervals. C. Create a temporary mask with a towel or rag. D. Wait until you get the correct RPE before starting. Question 2 Answer D. Wait until you get the correct RPE before starting. Question 3. Which of these is most likely if your body comes into contact with wet cement? A. Leptospirosis. B. Vibration white finger. C. Temporary hearing loss. D. Chemical burns and dermatitis. Question 3 Answer. D. Chemical burns and dermatitis. Question 4. At what angle should ladders be placed against a wall? A. 75 degrees. B. 40 degrees. C. 50 degrees. D. 65 degrees. Question 4. Answer. A. 75 degrees. Question 5. Which of these statements is not true about ladders? A. You should have at least three points of contact while on a ladder. B. A ladder should tied at the top to ensure it doesn't slip. C. A ladder should be painted to prevent wear and tire. D. You should inspect the ladder before using it. Question 5 Answer. C. A ladder should be painted to prevent wear and tire. Question 6. What does PAT mean? A. Professional Appliance Test. B. Portable Application Test. C. Portable Appliance Test. D. Professional Application Test. Question 6 Answer. C. Portable Appliance Test. Question 7. Which of these would have to undergo a PAT test in your workplace? A. A microwave. B. A coffee maker. C. A radio. D. A battery-powered radio. Question 7 Answer. A. A microwave. B. A coffee maker. C. A radio. Question 8. What is the main reason for reporting accidents? A. So employees can make a claim for compensation. B. Someone needs to be blamed for the accident. C. So employers and employees can learn from and prevent the same accidents in the future. D. Employers need to keep records for survey purposes. Question 8 Answer. C. So employers and employees can learn from and prevent the same accidents in the future. Question 9. You find yourself on the job site next to a co-worker who is utilizing a loud piece of machinery. You are wearing no hearing protection. What should you do? A. Immediately stop and speak with the supervisor of your co-worker. B. Continue working, as the job site will always be noisy. C. Tell the worker to stop the job they are currently performing. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, for your ears. Question 9 Answer. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, for your ears. Question 10. It is a general rule that noise levels may be excessive if you must shout to speak to someone how far away? A. 6 meters. B. 4 meters. C. 5 meters. D. 2 meters. Question 10 Answer. D. 2 meters. Question 1. What does the H4T relate to? A. Safe ways of putting out a fire. 
B. Safe way of storing tools. C. Workplace exposure limits. D. Correct ways of reporting an accident. Question 1 Answer C. Workplace exposure limits. Question 2. What does RIDA stand for? A. Reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrences regulations. B. Reporting of injuries, deaths and dangerous occurrences regulations. C. Reporting of injuries, destruction and dangerous occurrences regulations. D. Reporting of injuries, diseases and deadly occurrences regulations. Question 2 Answer A. Reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrences regulations. Question 3. You witness a near miss and the worker involved is afraid of getting into trouble what should you do? A. Have a chat with him and ask him to be careful next time. B. Report it. C. He seems okay so all is fine. D. Take him to your supervisor immediately. Question 3 Answer B. Report it. Question 4. Whenever possible heavy loads should be A. Dragged along the floor. B. Split into lighter manageable loads. C. Carried on your shoulder. D. Left until a colleague can assist. Question 4 Answer B. Split into lighter manageable loads. Question 5. A risk assessment is important because A. It tells you who is in charge of health and safety at your work site. B. It is used to delegate tasks among workers. C. It tells you where tools should be stored. D. It tells you the safest way of performing a task. Question 5 Answer. D. It tells you the safest way of performing a task. Question 6. After raising a fire alarm, what's the next thing you should do? A. Hide under a desk. B. Find your supervisor and inform of the situation. C. Find your colleagues and take them out the building. D. Leave the building immediately. Question 6 Answer. D. Leave the building immediately. Question 7. Leptospirosis is a bacterial infection commonly caused by A. Rats and livestock urinating in water. B. Ants. C. Fish dying in water. D. Mosquitoes. Question 7 Answer A. Rats and livestock urinating in water. Question 8. Exit signs are one of the most vital safety signs on any site. What color are they? A. Red. B. Yellow. C. Green. D. Blue. Question 8 Answer. C. Green. Question 9. Asbestos is a toxic substance that affects men and women only but not children. A. True. B. False. Question 9 Answer. B. False. Question 1. When does your employer need to provide a first aid box? A. When the total number of employees exceeds 10. B. When the total number of employees exceeds 35. C. Every site should be equipped with a first aid box regardless of the number of employees. D. First aid boxes are provided at the company's discretion and are not compulsory. Question 1 Answer. C. Every site should be equipped with a first aid box regardless of the number of employees. Question 2. Protective midsoles on your footwear are used to A. Increase comfort throughout the day. B. Support your ankles and prevent them from twisting. C. Protect your feet from falling objects. D. Protect your feet if you step on nails and other sharp objects. Question 2 Answer. D. Protect your feet if you step on nails and other sharp objects. Question 3. Why are site inductions important? A. The work site health and safety rules are discussed during the site induction. B. 
It gives you the opportunity to formally meet your colleagues. C. It allows you to have a look around at the work site. D. It gives you the opportunity to meet the site manager and supervisors. Question 3 Answer A. The work site health and safety rules are discussed during the site induction. Question 4. Class 3 ladders are suitable for A. Heavy duty and industrial purposes. B. Domestic use. C. Both industrial and domestic purposes. D. Building site purposes. Question 4 Answer B. Domestic use. Question 5. When working in a hearing protection zone you must A. Be as quiet as possible. B. Not use any loud equipment or machinery. C. Ensure you wear hearing protection. D. Work as fast as possible and then leave in order to reduce the noise level. Question 5 Answer C. Ensure you wear hearing protection. Question 6. What should you do if you notice a safety hazard that no one else seems to notice? A. Stay away from that area. B. Report it to your supervisor immediately. C. Keep on working and report it at the end of your shift. D. Report it to your colleagues and tell them to stay away from that area. Question 6 Answer B. Report it to your supervisor immediately. Question 7. Why is it important to sign in whenever you are on site? A. To ensure you're working your correct hours. B. To ensure you're accounted for in the event of an evacuation. C. The HSE needs records of your working hours. D. Signing in is optional and not compulsory. Question 7 Answer B. To ensure you're accounted for in the event of an evacuation. Question 8. Which of these fire extinguishers are most suitable for use on electrical fires? A. CO2 and dry powder. B. CO2 and water. C. CO2 and foam. D. Foam and dry powder. Question 8. Answer. A. CO2 and dry powder. Question 1. Which of the following should be classed as hazardous waste? A. Fluorescent light tubes. B. Broken ceramic tiles or bricks. C. Glass. D. Polythene and shrink wrap. Question 1 Answer A. Fluorescent light tubes. Question 2. There has been a spillage of hydraulic oil from plant working near a watercourse. What one action should you not do? A. Notify the site manager. B. Switch the plant off. C. Contain the spillage. D. Use detergents to clean up the oil. Question 2 Answer. D. Use detergents to clean up the oil. Question 3. Which two actions could help minimize waste? Select two answers. A. Leave bags of cement and plaster out in the rain unprotected. B. Reuse of cuts as far as possible rather than discarding them. C. Use new material, packs at the beginning of each day. D. Only take or open what you need and return or reseal anything left over. E. Always take much more than required just in case you need it. Question 3 Answer B. Reuse of cuts as far as possible rather than discarding them. D. Only take or open what you need and return or reseal anything left over. Question 4. The high levels of solvents in some paints and resins can cause A. Lung problems. B. Headaches, dizziness and sickness. C. Effects on other parts of your body. D. All of the above. Question 4 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 5. When drilling, cutting, sanding or grinding, what is the best way to protect your long-term health from harmful dust? A. Wear FFP3 rated dust mask and impact goggles. B. 
wear any disposable dust mask, hearing protection and impact goggles. C. Use dust extraction or wet cut and wear light eye protection. D. Use dust extraction or wet cut, wear FFP3 rated dust mask, hearing protection and impact goggles. Question 5 Answer D. Use dust extraction or wet cut, wear FFP3 rated dust mask, hearing protection and impact goggles. Question 6 You have been given a dust mask to protect you against hazardous fumes, what should you do? A. Start work but take a break now and again. B. Do not start work until you have the correct respiratory proactive equipment, RPE. C. Do the job but work quickly. D. Wear a second dust mask on top of the first. Question 6 Answer B. Do not start work until you have the correct respiratory proactive equipment, RPE. Question 7. You have finished your work and need to sweep up the dust created, what should you do? A. Make sure there is plenty of ventilation. B. Dampen down the area. C. Put your protective mask back on. D. All of the above. Question 7 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 8. Which of the following do you need to do to ensure that your mask works? A. Check it's the correct type needed. B. Check you are wearing it correctly. C. Pass a face fit test wearing the mask. D. All of the above. Question 8 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 9. You are using water as part of dust control and run out, what should you do? A. Carry on as you have nearly finished. B. Stop and refill with water. C. Carry on but get someone to sweep up afterwards. D. Ask everyone to clean the area and then carry on. Question 9 Answer B. Stop and refill with water. Question 10. Which of these activities does not create silica dust, which is harmful if breathed in? A. Break up concrete floors and screeds. B. Sawing timber and plywood. C. Chasing out walls and mortar joints or sweeping up rubble. D. Cutting curbs, stone, paving slabs, bricks and blocks. Question 10 Answer B. Sawing timber and plywood. Question 11. There are many kinds of dust and fumes at work, breathing them in over time can cause you to develop A. Skin cancer. B. Occupational dermatitis. C. Sore throat. D. Occupational lung disease. Question 11 Answer D. Occupational lung disease. The health and safety sign below is used to indicate A. Fire hose location. B. Fire assembly location. C. Fire extinguisher location. D. Fire alarm point. Question 1 Answer. D. Fire alarm point. Question 2. What should you do if you discover a child wandering around on a construction site? A. Escort the child to safety immediately. B. Just ignore it as it's not your problem. C. Find your supervisor and report it. D. Find your safe manager and report it. Question 2 Answer A. Escort the child to safety immediately. Question 3. What does the health and safety sign below mean? A. Dangerous to the environment. B. Hot liquid. C. Corrosive. D. Irritant. Question 3 Answer C. Corrosive. Question 4. What does the health and safety sign below mean? A. Dangerous to the environment. B. No fishing in this area. C. Do not dump refuse here. D. Protected wildlife area. Question 4 Answer A. Dangerous to the environment.
Question 5. If high visibility clothing is needed to carry out your work, who should provide this? A. Your employer needs to provide it then have the cost deducted from your wages. B. Your local job center will provide this. C. Your employer needs to provide this. D. You need to buy your own. Question 5 Answer C. Your employer needs to provide this. Question 6. To help prevent injuries caused by manual handling you should do all the following except A. Learn proper lifting and carrying techniques. B. Use lifting equipment. C. Disperse your items into smaller loads. D. Carry as much items as possible to get the task completed faster. Question 6 Answer D. Carry as much items as possible to get the task completed faster. Question 7. Class B fires are fires involving all of the following except? Choose two answers. A. Kerosene. B. Propane. C. Gasoline. D. Cooking oil. Question 7 Answer. B. Propane. D. Cooking oil. Question 8. Which class of fire does magnesium and aluminium materials fall under? A. Class D. B. Class B. C. Class A. D. Class F. Question 8 Answer. A. Class D. Question 9. Which of these two types of fire extinguishers are most suitable for use on electrical fires? Choose two answers. A. Water. B. Foam. C. Wet chemical. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 9 Answer. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 10. In the event of a fire you should do all the following except A. Exit the building immediately using the nearest lift. B. Call the fire brigade. C. Operate the nearest fire alarm. D. Tickle the fire if safe and trained to do so. Question 10 Answer A. Exit the building immediately using the nearest lift. Question 1. Using eye protection is vital for outside safety. When should you wear eye protection? A. Only when you're working with power tools. B. Only when you're working with hazardous chemicals. C. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. D. Only when your eyes come into direct sunlight. Question 1 Answer. C. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. Question 2. Protective midsoles and your safety footwear are designed to A. Prevent you from twisting your ankle. B. Prevent chemical burns if you step on hazardous chemicals. C. Ensure your footwear remains comfortable throughout the day. D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Question 2 Answer. D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Question 3. What should you do if you're given a task that requires you to wear a full body harness but you've never used one before? A. Carry on and try to work it out yourself. B. Ask a colleague who wears one for advice. C. Ask for an expert to train you. D. Ask for the instruction manual and figure it out yourself. Question 3 Answer. C. Ask for an expert to train you. Question 4. Wearing a safety helmet in hot weather can be uncomfortable. Which of these is true about wearing a safety helmet in hot weather? A. You can drill small holes in your helmet to increase airflow and keep you cool. B. You can take it off for short periods of time while you're working. C. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. D. You can wear it sideways if it's more comfortable this way. Question 4 Answer C. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. Question 5. 
What should you do if you accidentally drop your safety helmet and crack it? A. Get another one immediately. B. Wait until you break and get another one. C. Carry on working if it's only a small crack. D. Wait until the end of your shift and get another one for the next day. Question 5 Answer A. Get another one immediately. Question 6 If your job role requires specific type of PPE when you need to pay for this? A. Yes, you'll need to pay a percentage of the total cost. B. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. C. Yes, everyone is responsible for providing their own PPE. D. Maybe, you might need to pay as PPE is provided at your employer's discretion. Question 6 Answer B. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. Question 7. What should you do if your safety footwear gets damaged while working? A. Try to fix it and carry on working. B. Throw it away and use your trainers. C. Keep using it until your next break and then replace it. D. Get a replacement immediately. Question 7 Answer. D. Get a replacement immediately. Question 8. All of these statements are true about PPE except A. PPE must be worn in accordance with the instructions. B. You are responsible for providing your own PPE if the ones you're given is lost. C. Any damage to your PPE must be reported to your supervisor. D. You must ensure your PPE is stored correctly when you're not using it. Question 8 Answer B. You are responsible for providing your own PPE if the ones you're given is lost. Question 9. What should you do if the disposable ear plugs you're given keeps falling out of your ears? A. Throw them away, continue working and get another pair at your next break. B. Take them out and continue working. C. Stop working until you get a pair that fits correctly. D. Secure it with some rolled up paper. Question 9 Answer C. Stop working until you get a pair that fits correctly. Question 10. It's important for you to wear the correct type of gloves when dealing with hazardous substances. If you don't then you're like to succumb to A. Arthritis B. Vibration white finger C. Raynaud syndrome D. Skin disease Question 10 Answer D. Skin disease What should you do if you need to store materials on a flat roof but you cannot fit edge protection? Choose three answers. A. You must ensure that the materials are stored in such a way that they cannot fall. B. You must ensure that you install a cantilever safety net below the roof edge. C. You must ensure that the materials do not endanger your colleagues or others in that area. D. You must ensure that you and your colleagues can have safe access to the stored materials. Question 1 Answer A. You must ensure that the materials are stored in such a way that they cannot fall. C. You must ensure that the materials do not endanger your colleagues or others in that area. D. You must ensure that you and your colleagues can have safe access to the stored materials. Question 2. What should you do if you need to use a safety lanyard but the stitching is damaged? A. Dispose of it and carry on working without one. B. Continue using the lanyard only if the damaged stitching is less than 4 inches. C. Ask for a replacement and do not start working until you have a suitable replacement. D. Continue to use the lanyard and get another one at the end of your shift. Question 2 Answer C. Ask for a replacement and do not start working until you have a suitable replacement. Question 3. If you are using inflatable airbags as a means of fall or rest you must ensure that the inflation pump A. Is electrically powered. B. Is turned off every couple of minutes to avoid the airbags from over inflation.
C. Is turned off as soon as the airbags are full. D. Stays on at all times when there's work being carried out at height. Question 3 Answer. D. Stays on at all times when there's work being carried out at height. Question 4. What is edge protection designed to do? A. It's designed to stop materials and people from falling over. B. It's designed to direct rainwater into a specific area. C. It's designed to allow easier access to the roof. D. It's designed to stop unauthorized entry to the roof. Question 4 Answer A. It's designed to stop materials and people from falling over. Question 5. What is the maximum permitted gap between the guardrails on a working platform? A. 300 mm. B. 470 mm. C. 500 mm. D. 520 mm. Question 5 Answer. B. 470 mm. Question 6. How should you wear your safety helmet if you need to lean over an exposed edge while working at height? A. You should tilt your helmet backwards which should prevent it from falling over. B. You should tilt your helmet to the side which will help to prevent it from falling over. C. You should ensure you make use of the chin strap and wear the helmet as normal. D. You should not wear your helmet while carrying out these tasks. Question 6 Answer C. You should ensure you make use of the chin strap and wear the helmet as normal. Question 7. What should you do if you discover a rung missing near the top of the ladder you're about to use? A. Use the ladder but make sure you're very careful when going over the missing rung. B. Stop using the ladder and report the defect immediately. C. Flip the ladder so the missing rung stays closer to the ground. D. Use the ladder but make sure a colleague holds the ladder while you're on it. Question 7 Answer B. Stop using the ladder and report the defect immediately. Question 8. Guardrails are essential for safety while working at height. These should be fitted to a working platform when A. There's a possibility you could fall 5 meters. B. These should only be fitted if you need to store materials on the working platform. C. There's a possibility of you getting injured if you fall. D. There's a possibility you could fall 10 meters. Question 8 Answer. C. There's a possibility of you getting injured if you fall. Question 9. Using the Beaufort scale is vital for your safety while working at height externally because it measures A. How much weight you can store safely on a roof. B. How much weight you can store safely on a scaffold. C. How many people can be on a roof at the same time. D. The wind speed. Question 9 Answer. D. The wind speed. Question 10. What are Class 3 ladders? A. Class 3 ladders are ladders which are designed for use in industrial and construction environments only. B. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site as they're designed for domestic purposes. C. Class 3 ladders should only be used by trained workers on site. D. Class 3 ladders are the recommended choice for working near overhead cables. Question 10 Answer. B. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site as they're designed for domestic purposes. Question 11. Who should direct and dismantle a scaffold tower? A. Anyone who has worked on a scaffold tower before can do this. B. Only trained, competent and authorized people should carry out these tasks. C. Anyone with the instruction book in their possession can carry out these tasks. D. Anyone who has witnessed these tasks being carried out can perform them as well. Question 11 Answer B. Only trained. Competent and authorized people should carry out these tasks.